Uh, is there any design pattern related to Python and penetration testing or best practice that you can think of? The shortest answer I would have for you is that less is always more. If you can do something in less time and with less effort, but at the same time with the same efficiency, you, you, you'll you just uh, have to do that. You, you, you will actually focus on that. If you can write fewer lines of code that achieve the same thing, do it because higher verbosity I would say isn't the best practice for true professionals. You can comment your code, of course, and the degree of commenting is subjective, but more code is not always better. It, you shouldn't be like overwhelmed by a script or by a class that has 10,000 lines of code, uh, which would be able to be achieved uh, with the same efficiency in maybe 3,000 lines of code. So in this case, and in most cases, simple is beautiful. If you can simplify something and you can always take stuff out, you can almost always take stuff out. And this is regardless of, uh, this is regardless of coding in life. You can always simplify something. You can always take a better approach. You can always take a faster path to something. And I'm all in for that kind of minimalistic thinking. I think it draws a lot into the 80-20 Pareto principle where you would get 80% of uh, the results with 20% of input. So this is kind of a basic universal principle. 20% of your input will get you 80% of the results. So you will be focusing on that 20%. Instead of doing everything for everyone, you just do that small thing that yields you the most results. And that's also when it comes to coding, I'm kind of drawing tangents here. So there's this platform here where you can practice uh, Python for free. It's called Adapit, E-D-A-B-I-T dot com. So it's a free platform where they have like uh, more than a thousand challenges when it comes to Python and they're categorized on uh, algorithms, math, strings, functions, whatever multiple categories when you actually solve one of the challenges one of the coding challenges you are able to so after you solve it you're able to actually look into other people's solutions oh, that's interesting and i actually find uh, that i can improve my coding uh, because i my tendency is I don't consider myself a good programmer, even though I've been doing uh, five years of Python as of now, I've developed a lot of intuition when it comes to Python. I kind of feel when I'm doing mistakes and stuff like that because I've done hundreds of hours of debugging and that actually helped me a lot in learning uh, aspects of the language. But when it comes, I don't consider myself a developer. I know my way around Python and I, I know what to focus on when it comes to Python and penetration testing and cybersecurity. There are a couple of libraries. So when it comes to Python and, pen and cybersecurity, uh, the 80-20 here or the, yeah, the 2080 here is that the few libraries that you're going to be focusing on are the most used libraries in cybersecurity, such as Scapy, Sockets, Requests, Beautiful Soup, and a couple of others. These are the most frequently used uh, libraries when it comes to Python and cybersecurity. So I was saying that after I solve a challenge on Edibit, a Python challenge, I look into other people's uh, solution and I can see that my f five lines of code were actually solvable in one line of code. That's, that's how you would actually learn. That's one of the best practices that you were actually asking me for. If you want to gain an edge over other cybersecurity professionals, take my Python for Pentesters course and uh, learn how to leverage the power of Python in penetration testing and cybersecurity. Link in the description.